Welcome to this tutorial on nested dictionaries in VBA. In this video, we will cover everything you need to know about using nested dictionaries in your VBA code, including how to create them, how to add items to them, and how to retrieve items from them. Whether you are a beginner or an experienced VBA developer, this tutorial will provide you with the knowledge and skills you need to effectively use nested dictionaries in your projects. And make sure to download the source code from the link in the description below. So let's get started. Before we use the dictionary in our project, we must first add a reference to its library. And this is because the library is external to VBA. Now we do this by selecting tools reference and then we find Microsoft scripting runtime in our list and we check it on. And once we do this, then we can use the dictionary in our project. We add items like this. We say dictionary add and we use key and value. So the key is typically a string, it can be a date or a number, but typically it's a string and the value is normally a basic data type, but in the case of a nested dictionary, it will be a dictionary. Now to retrieve an item from the dictionary, we use dictionary.item and the key name. So in this case, you can see we retrieved the value 23 for orange. Now if we change this to pair, it will bring us back the value 12. So this is how we retrieve items in the dictionary. Now normally we don't use item. The default of using dictionary is the same as item, so normally when you see it written, you won't see item, but it's doing exactly the same. Before we start writing the code, we should really understand how VBA works with dictionaries. So let's take a peek under the hood. When we declare a normal variable in VBA, such as dim count as long, VBA creates a space in memory and assigns the value zero to it. When we assign a value to the variable, then the current value is replaced with the new value. And this is the same for all basic data types like states, strings, and currency. However, when we work with objects in VBA, the process is slightly different. When a dictionary variable is declared, it contains nothing as the default value. Using set dictionary equals new dictionary does two things. It creates a new dictionary in memory. It places the memory address of this dictionary in the variable. VBA does all this seamlessly, so we mostly don't notice but it's important to understand when it comes to dealing with nested dictionaries. When we use dim and new on the same line, it is doing the same as the first two lines. The difference is that set allows us more flexibility when the application is running. If we assign the dictionary variable to another variable, pass as a parameter or return from a function, then VBA copies the memory address to the new variable. You may wonder why VBA works this way. One reason is efficiency. Imagine if every time you pass the dictionary variable to a function or subroutine, VBA had to create a copy of the entire dictionary. This would be extremely inefficient, especially if your dictionary contained a large number of items. By storing the memory address and passing that around instead, VBA can save time and resources. In these examples, we see how dictionaries can be used to store values that are basic types, such as long integers or strings. It's important to note that if we add a dictionary as a value in our main dictionary, we are only storing the reference to that dictionary rather than the actual contents of the subdictionary. This is because the value stored in the main dictionary is simply the memory address. This is advantageous as it allows us to create multiple levels of nested dictionaries without worrying about the capacity of the dictionary. Now that you have a better understanding of how VBA treats objects in memory, you should have a clear idea of how to use nested dictionaries effectively. So let's look at an example of using a nested dictionary in the code. So the first thing that we'll do is declare our dictionary like this, and this creates an empty dictionary in memory. And this is gonna be our main dictionary that will contain the other dictionaries. Now we declare a customer as a dictionary variable, and this contains nothing at the moment, but when we use set equals new, it creates an empty dictionary. So now we've got two empty dictionaries in memory. So we're gonna add values to the customer dictionary. You can see it added name as the key and John as the value. And then we add that to our main dictionary. And now our main dictionary in the value has the address of this dictionary. So we create a new dictionary using set customer equals new. And so the customer variable now references a new dictionary in memory. We've added name and Jenny. And when we add this to our main dictionary, you can see our main dictionary now references this dictionary. So this is essentially how we create nested dictionaries within the code. Now we're going to take a look at the variables in the watch window as our code is running. And this is important for troubleshooting the nested dictionary. So we've run the code to end sub and we've paused it there. And you can see when we look in our main dictionary variable that we've got two items, USA and France. 
Now, the way the dictionary works is that it just shows the keys. If we want to see further, what we can do is we can create another watch and we can use the key. So we use France and we know that France is going to give us back another dictionary. The main dictionary France is the sub dictionary customer. And you can see if we look under the sub dictionary France, you can see it's got one item name. So name is the key. Now, if we want to see what value is at the key, what we can do is we can just put name after the dictionary. So this is essentially saying the dictionary France and we're using the, the key name. And you can see that it shows us it's got Jenny as the value there. Now let's add another watch. And this time we're going to add the watch for the USA. So we want to see what name is stored in the USA dictionary. And when we click OK, you can see that it shows us the name John. So it's useful to understand this because we often want to check our variables within the watch window as our code is running. Now, another way we can check them is by using a print statement. We've seen how to put values into the dictionary. Now let's look at retrieving them. Now I'm going to use a variable first, a dictionary variable. And the reason I do this is because it's easier to understand if you're new to nested dictionaries. So we set this dictionary to main dictionary France, which we know is a dictionary itself. So this is our nested dictionary. And then once we get back to that dictionary, we can just access the item using the key name. Now, when we run the code, you'll see that it retrieves Jenny. Now, an easier way to do this without using a variable is to just use it directly. But if you're new to nested dictionaries, it might seem a bit advanced at the start. So using main dictionary France, this gives us back the dictionary. And then we can just use the key of this. So the first part is the dictionary. And then the second part is the key. When we run the code. You can see that it gives us back Jenny. So it works exactly the same as the first method except it's just a bit shorter. Now we're going to look at how to print out the contents of a dictionary and its sub dictionaries. So I've created some sample sub dictionaries here. You can see they just have the details of a customer name, address, phone, and we use the key customer ID as the key for the main dictionary. So let's write our print dictionary sub. The first thing we do is declare our keys and we're going to use these keys for the current item in the dictionary. And what we do is we say for each key in dictionary keys. So this gives us back the first key, the second key, and so on. And we print out the key. So the key is a customer ID. And we print a new line before it. And this just makes it very neat when we look at our output. And then we say for each sub key in this dictionary, and we want that dictionary, we want the keys of that dictionary. So this is our sub dictionary. And we're getting back all the keys. And then how we print it out is we print it out using dictionary key, which is the dictionary, and then we use sub key as the key of that dictionary. So similar to how we were retrieving data already. And then we just put in our two next statements, the next sub key, next key, and then we'll run the code and take a look at the results. You can see in the immediate window that we've got the results and you can see that it printed out the customer ID and then all the details. So in other words, the keys and the values of each of the sub dictionaries. Nested dictionaries in VBA are often used when working with data from web APIs. These APIs often return data in JSON format, which is a hierarchical structure of key value pairs. When this data is converted to dictionaries in VBA, it can create multiple levels of dictionaries that may include collections as well. If you're interested in learning more about using web APIs with VBA, then be sure to check out my video on the subject. And if you want to get a solid understanding of the basics of dictionaries in VBA, then make sure to check out my dictionary playlist.